and welcome to the first video of either a histology tissue lesson or the integumentary system lesson. And the reason why I put the or in there is because depending on your anatomy and physiology course, you might have a separate lesson on tissues, histology, and then go into the other body systems, or you might get the histology tissue section as you move through the other body systems. So what is a Mr. Ford to do? What I've done is I've taken histology lessons from all, all the material that I have, and I've put them off in a tissues lesson, and I've also taken those same histology lessons and incorporated them into the individual system. So for example, this video and the next couple of videos on the histology of the epithelial tissue can be found in the tissue section as well as the integumentary system lesson. So enough about that. Let's actually talk about what we mean by histology because we've already thrown the term around a few times. So let's define what we mean. Histology is defined as a branch of anatomy that deals with the minute structure of animal and plant tissues as discernible with the microscope. What this means, if you remember our lesson one, when we talked about levels of organization, we had subatomic, atomic cells, tissues. This is what we're talking about. We're talking about the tissues of the whole organizational area, all right? We're looking at, for example, skeletal muscle tissue, cardiac muscle tissue, smooth muscle tissue, epithelial tissue, nerves. We're looking at connective tissue. We're looking at these kind of component parts that's gonna make up the organs and then the organ systems and then ultimately the organism. If you take actually, if you take histology at a graduate level, you will have it as a separate course. I still remember my histology class. Every Monday we would spend four hours in a lab looking at tissues and then we'd have lecture throughout the week. I can tell you right now, if you do wind up having that, bring some sort of analgesiac, painkiller, whether it be aspirin or Advil or something like that, after four hours of looking at a microscope, you're gonna need it. But anyways, if you're in a general anatomy course, you get histology built into the rest of the material. There are four basic families of tissues that we look at when we're looking at histology. We take a look at the epithelial tissue, which is the, the topic of this video and the next couple of videos, connective tissue, which is a catch-all for a whole bunch of different things. You're gonna find in the connective tissue things like bone, blood, collagen fibers, elastic fibers, fibroblasts, there's a whole bunch of things in the connective tissue realm. Then we have the muscles, which are gonna find skeletal, smooth, and cardiac, and nervous. Now don't worry if you didn't get those other three. We're focusing right now on epithelial tissues. We cover those other three in their own series of videos. So what are epithelial cells? Epithelial cells, like I said, are part of the integumentary system. They are specialized components within many organs. They're going to cover organs, they're gonna form the inner lining of body cavities, and they line the hollow organs. The best way to think of epithelial cells is like saran wrap. Imagine for a second that you are watching these videos and you're prepping for an exam, and you don't wanna cook, so you order pizza. Always pizza with me, pizza and coffee, I don't know why. But let's say that you order pizza and you don't finish the whole pizza, so you wanna save some for tomorrow for breakfast. Don't judge me. <laughs> but tomorrow for breakfast, you wanna have some pizza. So you put the pizza on a plate and you put the plate in the fridge. And you wake up in the morning and you're all grumpy and tired because you spent all night studying. And you open the fridge and there's the pizza and it's all dried out and icky. Well, you didn't wrap it. So what you would have rather done was to take the pizza, put it on a plate, and then take some saran wrap and wrap the pizza. That wrapping is gonna keep the pizza fresh while it's in the fridge, so in the morning you can nom nom nom, enjoy your pizza. This is what epithelial cells do. They wrap, they preserve, they keep things in that they're supposed to stay in, and they keep things out that are supposed to stay out. We'll talk about functions in a few seconds. But that's what epithelial cells are for. That's their general function. Again, we'll talk about functions in a second, but this is what I generally want you to think about when we start talking about epithelial cells. They're going to wrap things, they're going to surround things. In fact, if there's an organ in the body, on the outside is epithelial cells. 
any openings in the body, any cavities, any lumen, any openings whatsoever, if there's an opening in the body, there is epithelial cells present. So when you get to the digestive system and you're looking at the small intestines and the large intestines, that big open area, yeah, guess what? There's epithelial cells there. When you look at the inside of the mouth, yes, there's epithelial tissue there. Your skin, epithelial cells. Your heart is wrapped on the outside by epithelial tissues and on the inside by epithelial tissues. Now there's other layers, don't worry about that right now. So epithelial tissue is everywhere with this one exception. Epithelial cells are not found covering the outside of articulations, meaning joints, bones come together. We don't have a layer of epithelial on the outside of that connecting area because it would be ground away and it would be not very good. Instead, we have articular cartilage. So with the exception of articular cartilage, epithelial cells line every cavity every organ, if you see it, it's probably got epithelial cells around it. If you can poke something into an opening, there's epithelial cells around it, okay? So epithelial cells surround everything. Now that we have that in your brain, let's move on. So it consists largely or entirely of closely packed cells with little intracellular material between adjacent cells. It's arranged in continuous sheets that helps it do its job of keeping your pizza fresh, and it has an apical, i.e. a free surface, as well as a bottom that attaches to a thin layer of connective tissue known as the basement membrane. The basement membrane helps it stay where it's supposed to stay, okay? It's connective tissue, it attaches. Epithelial tissue is also avascular, meaning without vascularization, meaning it doesn't have a direct blood supply. It's gonna get its blood supply through diffusion hopefully remember that from earlier lessons, it's going to get its blood supply through diffusion. Now, remember back to kindergarten, maybe first grade, maybe second grade, depending on how mature people were in second grade, and there was always this kid who figured out that they could take a pin, a P-I-N, a pin, and put it through part of their finger, a very superficial part of their finger, and dangle it and go, ooh, looky, looky, looky. This is probably also the same kid who ate all the paste. Anyways, but he could hang this pin out of his finger and there would be no blood. Imagine a paper cut that's not very deep and there's no blood. But um, here we go, epithelial tissue is a vascular. Now you might be saying, but if I get a deeper paper cut, it bleeds. Yes, but it's not cutting into, or it's cutting through and into something else besides just the epithelial tissue. It also has a very high mitotic rate, meaning this stuff reproduces quite quickly. It does a lot of asexual reproduction. It has to, it's constantly getting abused. Think of your hands and your feet and the abuse that you put them through daily. Uh, your mouth, let's say you're eating that pizza again and it's particularly hot and you burn your mouth. It has to be replenished a lot. So it has a very high mitotic rate, lots and lots of divisions. So let's take a look at some general functions of the epithelial tissue. It's going to cover and protect, like we've already said. It's going to secrete. We will get more into secretions of epithelial tissue when we start talking about glands around the end of our histology talk on the epithelial tissue. It's going to absorb. For example, in the gastrointestinal tract, in your intestines, it's going to help absorb a lot of stuff into the rest of the body. It's responsible for sensation, so you feel things. It's very touchy-feely, and it forms a semi-permeable barrier. This is also very important when we start talking about the cardiovascular system, the capillaries, as well as the respiratory system in the alveoli, the functional portions of the lung where gas exchange occurs. So those are the general functions of the epithelial tissue. In our next video, we're gonna take a look at how we classify epithelial tissue.